I'm Valid Ghost, and today we're going to be watching another episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. We are on Season 1, Episode 9, Hide and Q. Q interrupts an urgent Enterprise mission and tempts Riker by endowing him with extraordinary powers. Real quick, I just want to remind you guys that I am being quiet on purpose because I am recording this video late at night. It is 12.37 a.m. on a Saturday, <laughs> so I have to be kind of quiet. Sorry about that in advance. Also, I would like to remind you guys that this is a reaction video. You know, just in case you didn't know. This is not the full episode. I will be super annoying and talk throughout the entire video. In fact, my voice will be heard more than Rikers and Picards and Datas and Geordies and Tashas and Worfs and everybody else's, alright? So, I don't want to hear any complaints about me being annoying because that's the purpose of this video. This, this video's purpose is for me to be as annoying as possible, alright? And if you don't want that, you know, you can, you can leave. The door is right there. It's always open. You're free to leave. You're free to come in at any time. Any time. <laughs> Let's see. Life updates. The migraine is gone. Let's see. I still got the blue hair. If anyone's curious about the blue hair, it is still here. It is here to stay. Probably forever, man. It's been like over a month since I got this hair. Yeah, it's, it's here to stay. <laughs> My tub is still blue, man. My fingernails, they're still blue. Everything... It's still blue, but uh, the hair itself is no longer as dark as it once was. Instead of being a Krom from Fire Emblem Awakening, I am now more of uh, an Azura from Fire Emblem Fates, which sucks because I hate Azura. Azura is annoying and boring, and I wish she were dead. <laughs> okay, that was a little mean. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> Azura. Azura is a really bad character. Well, I mean, she's not... No, she's a bad character. I hate her. <laughs> no, you know who's worse than Azura? Lilith. Lilith is worse than Azura because you can't even use Lilith. At least Azura had the decency to be a good unit, you know? Lilith isn't even a unit. Lilith just sucks. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I hate Lilith. And she also has, like, blue hair. Anyway, my hair is getting lighter. That's the whole point. Nobody cares about Fire Emblem. No none of you care except maybe one person... I know for a fact one person cares about the Fire Emblem commentary anyway. <laughs> the rest? I don't know. You guys probably aren't getting anything from it. What the frick's Fire Emblem Ghost? What are you talking about? <laughs> Without any further ado, the intro has already been... It, it's already 11 minutes long. This is ridiculous. I should stop. I should stop. Let's start. Let's get into this. This is a 50 minute video and it's almost 1am. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, wait. You know what? Uh, pew pew. There, that was the cue to, to do the, the phaser. Yeah, well, hopefully editor me understands that. Anyway, let's get in. Captain's logs. Also, I just want to say, the title Hide and Q doesn't make too much sense. I'm, I'm just saying, like, it's hide and seek, right? That's that's the play on words they're doing. Instead of hide and seek, they say hide and Q, right? It doesn't make sense. If it was um, hide and see, you know, like... Like the letter C instead of the letter Q. That would make more sense. Because it it's it sounds more like seek. You know, I mean it's not perfect, but hide and Q just doesn't doesn't roll off the tongue as well. They should have did a different pun, I think. Having dropped off Counselor Troy. Oh, she's not gonna be in this episode. Oh no, not Counselor Troy. We needed her. It's gonna be so empty without her. Oh no! <laughs> An accidental explosion has devastated a mining operation there. Explosion? Oh, that sounds bad. Include a burn unit with each kit. It's too bad none of this matters because Q is going to come any minute now and just and, and just throw us into a different storyline. The number of colonists at the site is five hundred and four. Are you prepared for that many, Doctor? Mm, no, I don't think I don't think anyone's prepared for five hundred and four patients. Jesus Christ, how many doctors are on this ship? If there's like only four hundred people on this ship, assuming that this ship is about as big as Kirk's ship, and didn't that ship also didn't that ship have about four hundred people? Assuming that, how many of 
those 400 are doctors. You would assume, like, I don't know, 20? <laughs> Maybe 30 <laughs> are doctors or, or medically trained in some aspect, perhaps? Giving them a bit of a doubt. Let's say all of the, uh, Security people know first aid. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe there's that. Maybe everyone who's in security knows at least first aid. So uh, that would be like maybe like two hundred people. Maybe I mean, how many people on this ship are civilians? You know, people who are who are just here as like researchers and they have their families and they don't fight. How many how many of those people exist on this ship? I don't know. Anyway, the point is, this isn't a hospital. This is like, we have one doctor, and she has like, what, two nurses, it looked like? We don't really get to see how many blue shirts are on this ship, but I would assume it would be like, I, I don't know, one-fifth of the people on the ship? Which isn't many. We believe so, sir. Okay, I guess they are. <laughs> Point one. Careful there. Point eight more ticks, or whatever, is going to turn you into a lizard. So, Captain, I'm picking up a force field out there of some kind. It's Q time? Q time? Is it Q time? Q! That's your Q! It's just like episode one. And there's- what the frick is that? Human. What, what the frick is that? Why, why is he a ball with three snakes coming out of him? He's like three cobras. Three photoshopped cobras that are colored differently <laughs> what is this <laughs> what is this system yeah get him morph you look like you almost tripped over that that would have been dangerous man you could have hurt yourself yeah and tasha too tasha's coming in too jumping over the railing yeah ramps are for suckers we are on a mission of rescue we had a group of badly injured we oh my god you think he cares he doesn't care he's a ball with three snakes he's not gonna the queue. we have much to discuss Including, perhaps, the realization of your most impossible dream. No, no, we don't have dreams. Our dreams are dead and we don't care about them. Right now, 504 people are probably gonna die, so we gotta, we gotta go help them and stuff. You will abandon that mission, Captain. Oh, no, I cannot. Alright, ball with snakes. Why is he a ball with snakes coming out of him? <laughs> is that, like, his real form? Good lord, it better not be. He better be copying some kind of alien or something, because what- Why would something like the Q be a freaking ball with three cobra heads coming out of it? If my magnificence blinds you. No, it confuses me and it makes me kind of angry. I'm, I'm a little upset and, and kind of disappointed, to be honest. In fact, I'm glad I blocked that image out of my mind. Because I honestly did not remember it. And I'm surprised I didn't remember it. Because how the frick would you not remember the Q being a freaking ball with sparkles floating around it like it's freaking Edward from Twilight and three cobra heads coming out of it? I have to lower my voice. I'm being a little too loud. No, go back to the ball with snakes. Oh. Starfleet Admiral. No, don't be an admiral. I hate admirals. They're always evil and corrupt for some reason. <laughs> oh. Intro time. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise on its five-year mission to explore a strange new world, seek out new life, new civilizations, and to boldly go where no one has gone before. Skip that intro. We don't want no copyright claim. We need to speed this up. Speed this Captain up. I should skip. Our rescue mission to the what did it say? It said hide and cue. That was the title. Look at look at Tasha and Worf. They're both sticking out their TV remotes. Wait, no. Tasha has the TV remote. Worf has the same uh, phaser as I do. Except mine has, has an orange tip and looks a lot more like a like a child's toy. Is is Picard holding an NES controller? What is that? <laughs> what is what the frick? By an immense. Oh no, Starfleet Admiral Q. Neither. Oh, did you hear that? He said Admiral. You know, he rolled his R's there. It was like I can't do it, but it was impressive. I'm impressed, Captain. That was impressive. Ah, the redoubtable Commander Riker, whom I noticed before. Hey, Riker. He's gonna give you powers, apparently, right? Is that what the summary said? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember this episode. <laughs> Clearly not, considering. What the cue is. You seem to find this all very amusing. Well, I do too, because this is, you know, almost a comedy, sort of. 
at times. <laughs> at least it feels that way. <laughs> I might. It's almost like a sitcom. You know what? They should make a Star Trek sitcom. Have they? If so, I want to see it. They need to make one. Can you imagine a Star Trek sitcom? Humans who are your species is always suffering and dying. I agree, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> you will make no move against him unless I ordered it. Don't be so lame, Picard. Let him blast him in the head. What's the worst that's going to happen? Honestly, it's not going to do anything. If, if anything, Q's going to be like, Haha, that was fun. Do it again. You had the realization of impossible dreams to offer us? Mm, not really tempting, honestly. I don't. I don't care about that. I don't care about impossible dreams. If they're impossible, then I don't. I don't want them. I don't want the realization. You know, why would I want to know about the impossible dreams? I'm happy living in my ignorance. Thank you very much. I'd like to continue that way, and I would like to go and help those 504 people that are gonna die or whatever. Come, Picard. Why do you distrust me so? Maybe because you're a ball with three cobra heads coming out of it. You condemned all humans as savages! You know, this is a good point too, actually. <laughs> oh, and you froze Tasha as well. That chart, the Q became interested in you! Ah, uh, well, I don't want them to be interested in me. At all. Ever. Can you guys leave us alone now? Bye-bye. 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 <laughs> There's no games? Did someone say game? Oh, great. He's gonna pull out the Monopoly. A deadly game? Oh, no. He's gonna pull out the Russian roulette. To the game. To the game. Oh, you took everyone but the captain. Good. You know, he had too much screen time anyway in the, the last episode. You know, let him take a break. Let him step to the side. Also, the counselor really isn't in this episode. <laughs> I guess she was busy or something, and they had to make an excuse of why she's not here. <laughs> oh, we've arrived in green screen land. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. Now this looks like an original Star Trek series set. Man, it's cute. It's very cute. Kind of plain, though. Needs more uh, tingly, tingly blue flowers. Maybe, or some salt-sucking creatures, maybe. Obviously a Class M world. Gravit- Ooh, look, there's- it's got two moons. Or maybe the two- two planets? Maybe- maybe they're on a moon. Uh, because it kind of looks like a moon. Maybe they're orbiting a planet. Twin moons. Yes, I just- I just noticed that. It's very pretty. I love twin moons. We're on Skyrim! We're in- Tamriel! We're in Tamriel! Or, uh, or, you know, that Star Trek, I mean, Star Wars planet place. Isn't there a Star Wars thing that has two planets? Two moons? I don't watch Star Wars, I'm sorry. <laughs> Doesn't matter, you're all Star Trek fans. None of you watch Star Wars, right? <laughs> I mean, I watched some Star Wars movies as a kid. I just don't remember any of them. Assuming this place even exists. Yeah, maybe it doesn't. It could all be just a figment of our imagination. But it won't be boring. Yeah, it looks pretty boring. I, I think it's going to be boring. This is season one. It could be boring. You know, speaking of this being season one, I actually didn't remember season one being this long. I mean, I, I'm not remembering any of these episodes, man. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I watched season one so long ago, but I don't remember freaking anything about this season, apparently. Dang, don't go back to him. We don't need to see what he's doing. He's boring. <laughs> he's he's going to have a boring, lame time up there, you know. Walking around, pacing around, talking to the computer. Mm, it's not an automatic door anymore, Picard. It would have been funnier if he walked right into it. <laughs> nope, that one's not working either. Sir, over there. Oh my god. <laughs> Everything that she sees, she's got to point out with the phaser. Oh, it could be a threat. <laughs> she's always ready. She's always ready to blast something. No. Oh. God, oh, what did the- why? <laughs> what is this? Join me, Riker. No, I will not. I will not join you. Sir, what he has in mind might provide us with vital information. I mean, it's either play the game or sit there. So, you know, we don't really have a choice. I don't think it's going to provide us with any information, though, Data. <laughs> it's just going to be a waste of our time. I like how Tasha's still got the, f the phaser pointed at him. As if that's gonna actually do anything, you know? It's great. <laughs> that better be ice-cold lemonade you're drinking. No, don't drink. You'll- you'll- he could drug it. He could drug it, man. Don't drink it. 
you moron, you're gonna get drugged and you're gonna start glowing purple or acting crazy or getting weird powers. You shouldn't have drank in that. Incredible. Tastes just like oh, lemonade. Hey. I was right. <laughs> I was right. I was just thinking about an old fashioned lemonade. Old fashioned lemonade. How can lemonade be old fashioned? All it is is lemons and sugar and water. What does new lemonade taste like? Did they add something I wasn't aware of? What about my people? Ah, uh, whatever they'd like, of course. Oh, they get the lemonade too. Oh, they all get different drinks. Oh no, they just is really, really dark, y'all. <laughs> Oh, but look at that. Tasha's got Kool-Aid. Uh, Jordy? Oh, no, it's kind of dark. Maybe a soda or something. Like a Coca-Cola, maybe. And then Worf? Uh, uh, orange soda, obviously. Oh, no, it's red. It's red. He's got red Kool-Aid. Or red Gatorade, maybe. Nope, it's not yellow. It's green. Oh, thank God. It's- but that- I don't think that's any better, actually. It kind of looks like either a- health drink, you know, like maybe a bunch of kale, like a kale smoothie. Uh, it kind of looks like that, which, uh, that does not sound appetizing. Or it could be like slime, just straight up sludge water. <laughs> it looks pretty bad. Oh, and uh, Jordy's drink is actually not as dark as I thought it was. It's actually more blue, so that kind of looks like, uh, something. <laughs> Data's not even gonna try it, because he's like, there's no point. I don't have taste buds. That's so sad. Yes, go! Go, Worf! Good job, good job. I would have done that too. I would have poured it right out. I wouldn't have drank that. I would have been like, nah, nah, nah. I'm not getting drugged today, sir. That was probably some blood wine or whatever, right? Waste of blood wine, man. But good job. I Good choice. Ooh, and he threw the thing too. Yes. Added insult to injury. Ugh. Beautiful, beautiful work, Corf. That's me clapping. Drink not with thine enemy. Rigid Klingon code. Uh, it should just be a normal code, man. I I believe in that code. Heck yeah. I ain't drinking something that my enemy is giving me. No way. I don't trust that. Why would I trust that? It could be poisoned. Perhaps you're not that ori- Is that a back scratcher? I want it, man. Looks fancy. Future which intrigues us, and should concern you the most. No, I don't care about it. We're all gonna die in the end anyway, man. It doesn't matter. No matter what we do, we're all gonna end up dead eventually. We're all gonna be dust in the wind someday. Whether it's tomorrow, later tonight, or in a thousand years from now, in a million years from now, we're all gonna die eventually. The human race is not gonna be, uh, continuing indefinitely because eventually the entire universe itself will die. The only way that the human race will continue indefinitely as if we somehow are able to transport ourselves to a different universe after our universe eventually dies, according to current uh, modern theories, uh, where basically all the stars in our system will die and everything will be cold for a while. <laughs> uh, or, um, not only that, but there's also the theory that, uh, uh, everything is expanding currently, and one day everything will go back to, to shrinking in on itself and, you know, uh, collapsing in on itself, and then it'll become the- and then it'll be like a tight little ball again, and then it'll be the big bang again, and then it'll expand again, and then it'll shrink, and then it'll expand, and then shrink, and then expand, and shrink, and some people even theorize that this wasn't even the first universe, you know, that this was like the second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh or who knows how many universes there have been. Perhaps parallel universes are just other universes that have already died. I need to stop talking. I need to stop talking. <laughs> I'm hurting my own brain here. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're all gonna die eventually, so the human future is not my concern right now. And I don't think it should be anyone's concern, because no matter what, we're all gonna end up dead. The whole planet's gonna end up dead. Pokemon is gonna die. <laughs> Pikachu? Already dead. <laughs> I just stopped you see, just of all the depressing. species, your change is at the heart of what you are. A change into what? I don't, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I actually don't want to know. I don't want to change. I like things the way they are now. Actually, I liked things the way they were in 2008. You know, people were a lot angrier then, but that was before 
my grandmother died, before my grandfather died, and before I got a phone. <laughs> so I consider that, like, the perfect age of my existence right there, 2008. This isn't part of any human future. Is it not? It kind of looked like it was. I thought he was, like, Napoleon or something. True. I mean, he was speaking French, he's wearing red, he's got a hat that's kind of fancy, he's drinking lemonade. I mean, I don't think... I don't know if Napoleon drinks lemonade, but, you know, I'm sure he did. <laughs> I borrowed this from your stodgy captain's mind. See, he, he look, he's being French. He's, he borrowed it from his, the captain, so obviously he's he's got to be Napoleon. No, how is this from the captain's mind? If this isn't from, like, any part of human history, then what? I'm just confused. <laughs> what is the captain thinking of, where you kind of look like in 18th century French military person, but also you kind of aren't any of that. What what dreams is the captain having? I don't know. Fire room. Look at that, look at that. So it was from human history. Because he's about to say it was. It was from N Europe's Napoleonic era. Look at that. I'm so smart. <laughs> I say, even though I'm sure that was pretty obvious. <laughs> this is from Europe's Napoleonic era, sir. Late 18th, early 19th centuries. Look, I even got the century right. You know, I was thinking 18th, 19th century. But Napoleonic equipment on an alien planet once... Oh, oh, that's the part that you were like, this isn't a human history thing. Well, uh, I, I, I thought you were just talking about his setup in general. But no, you're, you're talking about, like, the actual setting, the whole, the entire setting, setting the fact that he is a French guy on a moon <laughs> with moons surrounding it or maybe they're on a planet with moons who knows what is going on actually <laughs> that that is what you mean this this isn't like a specific actual battle this is just some piece of human history merged with uh fiction i i get you i get you, I get you. so different till it be a test of strength Thanks for showing off that that is definitely a prop, <laughs> and it's probably made of rubber. <laughs> a test of intelligence, then? <laughs> Equally as meaningless. Why, because we're stupid? Hey, excuse me, but I'll have you know that even though the android just explained everything, your little, your little get up here, I explained it first. And I don't remember this episode at all. And if I did remember this episode, and I did remember those words, that would be quite impressive, considering I haven't seen this episode in years. So either way, I've already proven that I'm a genius. <laughs> but it needs because I know fourth grade history. To risk play a game, what would we win? Your freedom. The greatest possible future that you could imagine. Uh, I don't care about that. I just want to go save the 504 people who are about to die. Which of course requires something totally disastrous of your to lose. Death. Are we gonna die? We're gonna die if we lose. Great. Now the point I don't even want the reward. Honestly, I don't. Point of this, this game shall in fact be completely unfair. Well, then we're all gonna die. You've gone too far. Yeah, zap him, zap him. Game penalty. You know, this is how you die, man. Th that is exactly how you freaking why you die. This is why you die, actually, because you're you're so headstrong. You just go into everything, man. Honestly, you're one of my favorite characters just because. You do stuff like this, but you're fighting a freaking god creature. <laughs> you should have seen this coming. <laughs> what were you going to do, huh? <laughs> Beat him up with your bare fists? Yeah, look at these three. They don't even look shocked at all. They're like, mm, there goes Tasha again, getting a penalty. <laughs> there she goes. Not shocked at all. Oh, Data looks a little shocked. <laughs> where is she, Q? Nah, uh, don't worry, she's just with the captain again, I think. To use a 20th century term, she's in a penalty box. Oh, okay. I really hope she's in a real penalty box. Like, I hope they have a, a box on the ship. Or maybe in, in a void. You know, in a, in a black void of space. They just have a box and she's just in it, bounding on the glass. You know, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Where she will remain unharmed unless one of you merits a penalty. Oh, great. That's That's just wonderful. But this isn't the time for her to die, so I know she'll be fine. None of them are going to get a penalty. And where does she go? Into the box. The toy box, that is. The death. The death box. The grave. The coffins. She goes and co into, a co into the coffin. That's the toy box. Into nothingness. 
Oh, that's worse than death, man. Well, he gave up fast. He's like, oh, uh, nothing more to do than just to sit here and wait, I guess. <laughs> Captain's log. Oh, now he's gonna record a log, of course. Captain's log. Oh, he can't even do that. The ship is mocking him. I wish I could help you, Captain. Well, that's very creepy, man. You, you just gave me, like, a heart attack, you know? Don't just sneak up on me like that. <laughs> but, yeah, there she is. Okay, you don't even need a box. That's just... That's disappointing. It sounds strange, but I'm in a penalty box. I mean, that's probably not the weirdest thing that's happened on Star Trek. Yes, I am gone! Oh, come on. No, no tears. Don't cry softly. No, we don't need that. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. It's not your time yet. We gotta wait until the goo monster comes and God, it's such a dumb death. <laughs> it's alright. No, no, it's not alright, actually. It's it's very not alright. I wanted to play Mario Party with them. And instead they grounded me. And I'm upset now. What in the hell am I doing? C crying? Yeah, exactly. Get yourself together, man. Don't be crying at a time like this. Penalty box. Tears are permitted. Okay, I'm gonna go into the penalty box right now. I need to. I need a good cry. <laughs> oh, if you weren't a captain. What? Huh? Whoa! Whoa! Wait! Whoa! Tasha, stop flirting with everybody. Jeez, <laughs> you've you've dropped enough hats, man. You're running out of hats here. <laughs> but then again, you're what? You're only human. I'm only human. And I bleed when I fall down. I'm only human. And I crash and I break down. The words in my head are knives in my heart. You build me up and then I fall apart. Cause I'm only human. <laughs> I'm just a little human. Penalty over. Oh, that's nice. It's only been like five minutes. Did I really just have to start crying? Okay. <laughs> I just had to throw a little bit of a tantrum and penalty's over. Cool. Wait, but she's staying here. She's not gonna- she's not allowed to play the game? She's just... Okay. A Marshal of France. Oh good, you immediately noticed. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say something. Ridiculous. Whether the first officer is worthy of the greatest gift the Q can offer. So, you're all about Riker, okay. The gift isn't for anyone else. Okay, that's- that's random, but alright, whatever. You know what? Right, it's about time Riker got an episode. Everyone's had an episode so far, but not Riker. I mean, I suppose Tasha and Data and Jordy haven't really had- and Worf haven't really had mu an episode, but Tasha, you know, she had her moments with the- the cat, and the- the- Rape kings. <laughs> Data got to drop some hats, so, you know, there was that. I mean, that was a very brief moment, but, you know, he's had some moments. You know, he had a finger trap, you know, he's he's been comic relief this whole time so far. And then, uh, but Riker hasn't really had anything, and Worf hasn't really had anything, Jordy hasn't really had anything yet. You know, they they're just kind of been there. It, it's their turn. It's their turn. It's Riker's turn. It'll be Worf and Jordy's turn another day, unfortunately, but it's Riker's turn today. Good for him. Excellent. He'll defeat you just as I did. Shall we I like that confidence, Captain. We wager on that, Captain. Sure, go ahead. I believe in Riker because this is season one and there are many more seasons to get through. Your starship command against... Against your keeping out of humanity's path forever. You've well, um... Excuse me, I'm pretty sure we're gonna win this game, but oh no, I accidentally went backwards or forwards or something. But anyway, um, even though we, we're gonna probably win this game, at least that's what I would assume, considering we all survived and there's more episodes than this one, um, you're still gonna bother us, so you didn't even follow your own rules here. I, th I think I went forward, I have no idea what happened, that's fine, it's, it's fine, I, I need context. <laughs> No, oh, we're just gonna be on Jordy's face now. Cool, cool. You know what? I didn't need context. I just needed Jordy's face. Thank you. I'm not going back. I don't even know how he went forward. <laughs> I'd see the freckles on his nose if he had them, sir. He's at the third. How do you know he doesn't have freckles? Can you can you actually see freckles? Can you actually tell if somebody has freckles, or do Klingons just not get freckles? <laughs> I don't know. Third ridge. The third ridge. Uh oh. 
So he's got binocular eyes too? Dang. Not even Data has binocular eyes. And he's a robot. You would think he had binocular eyes. Like Chibi Robo. <laughs> Okay, so Q just left an army down here and was like, okay, peace, I'm gonna go comfort Tasha because she started crying and I feel bad now. <laughs> Is this- what? <laughs> and he just left an army down here for them to fight? Okay. And of course they're all French. <laughs> Oh, oh, but they're not ju they're not just dressed as French people, they're also like some weird aliens. So they're aliens dressed as French military people. That's an interesting choice, you know. The Q is very creative. <laughs> Gotta give him props for that. <laughs> Morse just running away. Okay, he was like, ah, I don't like that, and I don't like that noise. I'm running away. I'm kidding, I know he was just there to scout them out. The play's the thing. And I'm surprised you have to ask when your human Shakespeare explained it all so well. Oh, there they go, talking about Shakespeare again. He's not the only one who did plays, you know. Many, many people did plays, you know. He wasn't the only successful one. Don't get me wrong, I love Shakespeare. Shakespeare's great, wonderful play writer. He did wonders for the world and literature in just general. But, you know, he's not the only one. Right? He's not the only one. <laughs> One it's a pity viewpoint. you don't know the content of your own library. Here's yeah, it's a pity you don't understand. You don't know the content of the, of our own library either, because you only know Shakespeare, and he only knows Shakespeare, and the whole friggin' show only knows Shakespeare. <laughs> there's more than just Shakespeare. I'm just saying, there's more to life than Shakespeare. There's more to plays than Shakespeare. There's more to stories than Shakespeare. <laughs> life is but a walking shadow. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, it, it's true, but it's also very depressing. Why is Shakespeare so depressing? I can make a better quote, so look. Uh, life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> I see us one day becoming that cute. I hope not. Oh, he's afraid you're gonna become freaking... R. We're gonna become R, which comes after Q. We're gonna be more powerful than the Q. We're gonna be R. Oh, you were- you had a whole entire ginormous book of Shakespeare. That's amazing. And it's illustrated. It's illustrated. Actually, I would love to see that book. I would. I would. Uh, that is not sarcasm. Because even though I do, point out the fact that they'd use Shakespeare way too much. I do love Shakespeare. I mean, not as much as I should, because school kind of made me hate Shakespeare because of all the book reports I had to do on his work. But, uh, still. The plays themselves, I love. They're, they're great. You know, no arguments there. And they're headed this way. Honestly, this is more boring than the Shakespeare talk. I would rather listen to those two talk about Shakespeare. I don't know why. <laughs> Armed with ancient ball and powder muskets. Oh, please. You know the freaking muskets are gonna shoot f phaser fire. Wow. Drop your weapons! <laughs> Worf's ready. He's ready for the battle. But sadly, it was just Riker. I'm afraid that was me, Worf. But what's inside of them isn't human at all. More like vicious animal things. Rude. They look just like people, but, you know, a little weirder. But they didn't act like animals, you know. I mean, they are making pig noises for some reason, but, you know, they seemed... They, they, they're walking on two legs. They seem humanish. No, oh, that's freaky. That freaked me out. <laughs> Think fast, Commander Riker. And move fast. Okay, that's creepy. That was really creepy. <laughs> ah, see, look at that. I was right. Oh my god, this this frame's amazing. <laughs> but I was right. The muskets are gonna shoot phaser blasts. <laughs> Use your power. Okay, power time. Bye, guys. Oh, hey, Data, you're back. Oh, and they left. Okay, well, bye, Riker. It was nice knowing you. You were a good first officer while you lasted. And now it looks like Tasha's all alone. Where'd the captain go? Is he still in the ready room? Reading Shakespeare? Yep, he was. Okay. <laughs> Q suspended time. 
Oh, good. That means there's still time to save the 504 people. So there was nothing to worry about at all. Great. Wonderful. There was, there were no, there was no danger. And there's our guys. Well, minus Riker. You know what? what? If Riker has the power, why didn't he beam himself back up too? I don't know. Oh, doesn't he want Riker to become a Q? Isn't that a thing? Yeah, that's probably a thing. <laughs> Dang, it didn't take you long at all to become a frickin' psychopath. <laughs> Perhaps you'll share the joke with me. The joke is you. You didn't give me the power. <laughs> I was trying to wish for another lemonade. <laughs> not beam them back. <laughs> How can you not appreciate being able to send your friends back to their ship? Because I'm still here with you, and that's lame. Or send the soldiers back to the nothingness from which they came. Well, th because that's sad. They deserve to live and enjoy their French fantasies, you know? Who am I to say that they can't exist and enjoy their French fantasies? I had French fantasies as a young child, you know? I used to want to go to Paris because of Rugrats. <laughs> or change your shape. Turn into a cat, turn into a cat, turn into a cat. I would turn into a cat. That'd be like the first thing I'd do. I'd be like, cat time. <laughs> and then I'd be like, okay, tiger time. <laughs> That's a bigger cat. And and then I'd probably get bored. And then I'd be like, dragon time. <laughs> time to burn down some villages. Become anything you want to be. We have offered you a gift beyond all other gifts. Out of the goodness of your heart. Yeah, there's a catch. We all know there's a catch. What's the catch? Unusual creatures. In your own limited ways. No, I like being limited. Limited limits ah, limits are great. They're like the best part of life. Knowing your limits, that's the best part about being human. Because uh uh um, Can you imagine how annoying other people would be if we were all perfect? They would be so much more annoying. I'm glad we're imperfect. So that I don't have to deal with perfect jerks. <laughs> have you any idea how far we'll advance? My guess is we're not going to get past Mars. At least that's what it seems like right now. But to become a part of you, I don't even like you. <laughs> I mean... So far, there doesn't seem to be a catch, though. Do I have to live in the Q continuum? Because that's a catch. I wouldn't want to. You guys seem like jerks. I'd rather stay on Earth. So, you know, if that's the catch, then... Yeah, I wouldn't take the powers, but... If that's... If there's no catch, if you don't even... If you don't even want me to be in this continuum with you, then I'll take it. I'll take the powers, man. Heck yeah. <laughs> Wesley, why... Why are you here? Why? You haven't been here the entire episode. Why? Why? Whatever. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> oh, there's the French people. Again. I thought they were gone, but I guess not. Commander Riker, what's going on? You know what? That's a very good question, kid, but, uh... You shouldn't be here. <laughs> I was sitting in school and... You were sitting in school, and then the writers decided, Hey, Wesley should be in the scene. <laughs> Worf, my phaser's gone. Are you... Oh my god, that's that's terrible. That's like Tasha's worst nightmare. She is unarmed. Oh my god. That's horrible. Look at her. Look at her. Her hands are in the phaser gripping position. She's like, oh my god. My one thing <laughs> that I had. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> man, Tasha just isn't even Tasha without her phaser. That's like part of her, man. That's like part of her body. It's like if she lost an arm or something. You armed? No. Oh, dang, that's not good for Worf either, but at least he has, like, the physical strength since he's a Klingon. But his Q. If you have an answer to any of this... What? Why are you yelling at Riker? What's wrong with you, Captain? He's still your first officer. You didn't even know that he was given any powers or anything. Look, see? They're not savages. They're... they're... they... they have music. They're cultured. <laughs> Yeah, get a morph! Charge in there! Charge! <laughs> oh well. Two out of three, that's pretty good. 
Oh, jeez, he's got a bayonet. And now he's stabbing Worf in the stomach with a bayonet. Actually, it looked kind of lower than the stomach. <laughs> no, don't go in there. You're a child. What the heck are you doing? No, no, this is a bad idea. What are you doing, kid? You're like 12. Don't don't go into the middle of a battle. What's wrong with you? You're, you're unarmed? And you're 12? <laughs> Wesley, Wesley, no! What are you guys doing? You're just shouting at the kid! What? Go in there, you cowards! <laughs> no, Wesley! Wesley, no! You're about to be stabbed by a bayonet! Wesley! Wesley, what are you doing? This kid was brought in here just to die. Dang. Poor kid. Also, it's been an hour and a half. What the heck am I doing? Why? Why? Why are these episodes becoming so much longer than normal? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just have a lot to say, apparently. Oh dang. He's like Dante and Del May Cry. When Dante gets stabbed in the stomach, Kevin's like, every game? <laughs> That's pretty gnarly, man. You got a nice wound there. <laughs> He's using his powers, isn't he? Q was gonna force him to use the powers. Oh, he made a Q barrier. Riker. No, <gasps> Riker. You are Q. You did that. Yes, yes, he did. Don't, don't scold him. He stopped things. And that's not all. That's not all. <laughs> okay, he just disappeared. I thought he was gonna heal Wesley or something, but no, he just, he just vanishes. Oh, okay. He he teleported Wesley back, and Wesley's is, uh, Wesley's fine. Okay, that's good. But why didn't you teleport him back to school? Whatever. Oh, and Worf's there too. Great. Oh, they're all back. They're all back. Great. Now look at that. W Riker's pissed. He's like, oh, I had to use the powers. Q forced me to use the powers. What a butt. <laughs> that grid. Their wounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has the power of the Qs. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone knows. Oh, good. We're finally going over there. Avoid the end. You know the implications as well as I. You know the rules, and so do I. They're not lying about controlling time and space. We've seen it in what they can do. You could snap your fingers and save those 504 people. Right now, if you wanted to. Then we could go home. <laughs> you could advance all of humanity with a, just a snap of your fingers. Don't do that, though. That's scary. Are you worried that I won't be able to say no to it? Okay, well, as soon as a non-important character dies, he's not gonna do it, but, I mean, it's kind of messed up. He did it for Worf, he did it for Wesley, he did it for all of you. But he's not gonna do it for some rando that's probably gonna die in the next ten minutes? That's kind of messed up, just saying. Does he keep his Shakespeare book behind- in, in, in a glass case? Is that the- is that the Shakespeare book? This man's got a freaking Shakespeare- Shakespeare shrine. He's got a Shakespeare shrine in his- in his ready room. That's- that's a little insane. Are there any others? <laughs> I like how Jordy walked into the room. <laughs> it's just us. Oh, so instead of 504, we have three? I mean, that's a big difference, but okay. At least it's manageable now. I mean, it was manageable before, apparently, but now it's a lot more manageable. Oh, there's others. Okay, it's not just three, it's like... I don't know, around ten? There's somebody under here! Move the rocks that are definitely not styrofoam out of the way. You're getting close, Dad. Yeah, you might want to be a little more careful, you know. I mean, don't don't just throw those things willy nilly. There could be people around. Oh, it's a child. Nah, she's dead. She didn't make it. She didn't make it. Riker's gonna use the powers. Instantly regret it. Q's gonna be like, haha, you used the powers. Maybe he's not gonna use the powers. Maybe Q will be like, hey, hey, you didn't use the powers. <laughs> Why not? It's not very cash money of you. Too late. She's dead. Oh no. So sad. Can I put her down now? I don't want to hold a dead person. I'm gonna get death stench all over me. <laughs> yeah, you you take the death stench. I don't want to. You got me a little sooner. If indeed you have the power of Q. Come on, Data. You know he can't use it. Come on, Data. Don't don't tempt him. Don't tempt him, Data. I know you'd use it instantly. <laughs> but but he can't do it. He's got standards. Certainly you can't bring her back to life. Come on, Beverly. Don't use start to. I can't. 
I'm prevented from that by a promise. That I made to the captain. They were still like, okay, I understand, I guess. <laughs> One less patient for me. <laughs> wow, good job, Riker. You really didn't save that child. Dang. That took some willpower. He's probably going to have nightmares about that for the rest of his life. I know I would. I should have never made that agreement with you. Look, he's already having regrets. He's already pissed at <laughs> Picard. <laughs> I could have saved that child. Well, you know, Riker, you do have your own brain. You have your own thoughts and your own actions and whatnot. You know, you don't you don't have to be Picard's little servant boy or whatever. You know, you can you can make your own decisions. You you should be able to anyway. <laughs> You were right not to try. He's right. And you know he's right. Once you became accustomed to that power, number one. When I used it- what, what would he do that would be bad? You know? Like, he'd bring people to life. That would eventually be bad for population control, I guess. But then again, we're in the space age, so we can- If, if there's too many humans, we can just find another planet to put us on, right? So there's no bad- There's no downside there, bringing people back to life. Um, so what would be the downside of using these powers? We could all become arrogant jerks like the Q. I guess that's, that's kind of a downside. And that's all I can think of. It's, it's 2 a.m. It's like 2 a.m. in the morning, man. I can't, I can't think of anything right now. I, I'll probably think of things later. You guys tell me. Tell me, what's the downside? What's the downside of, of using the Q's power? Tell me. I'm too tired. <laughs> For what happened, I saved most of our bridge crew. It's true. You're kind of, um... What's it? What's picky? Picky? Not picky. Prejudice? Uh, not prejudice. Um, you you have a preference. And when you grow to like it too much. Oh, maybe the captain will tell me. Yes, tell me the downsides. As soon as it's convenient, Captain, I want a meeting with you and your bridge staff. Oh, why? Are you gonna go into the Q community continuum? Discuss all of this new power. Wow, he didn't even let you finish, man. He's already turning into an arrogant jerk like the Q. You know what? I get it. I get it. This is why we can't have nice things, Riker. I need- I really need to stop commenting on everything because we are an hour and 38 minutes into this recording session and this is only a, like a 45 minute video. Oh, he came back. Where did he go? He wasn't gone very long. He's like gone for a second. For a commercial break. He was gone for a commercial break. Of course, Jean-Luc. Oh, look at that. He's already- he's becoming an R. He's an R already. Wesley, this meeting is not for you. Yeah, it's not. Why are you here? You shouldn't even be in this episode. <laughs> I guess they decided, uh, Wesley hasn't really been in the episodes lately, so we should throw him in here. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Why not? It was cool when you got stabbed in the chest. I bet that was- that was really cool for you to act, that part, probably. You know. Good job there. Sir, you helped make me a bridge officer. Well, I mean, I guess he has a point there. He always knows how to weasel his way into things, doesn't he? What a fitting name for him, you know, Wesley. Very close to, to weasel, you know, weaseling and whatnot. Acting ensign. Acting ensign. That's why you don't have a uniform yet, because you're just acting. I'm the same William T. Riker you've always known. I mean, you're kind of acting a little different. A little more arrogant. Well... They don't believe you. Look at them. They're all distrusting you. I can see the look of disgust and distrust on all their faces. Even Jordy, whose eyes are covered, and Data, who looks dead inside. <laughs> I can tell, man. They don't trust you. They don't trust you one bit. Everyone still looks uncomfortable. See? I noticed that, too. Perhaps they're all remembering that old saying, power corrupts. Well, you know, I mean, I don't think that's a truth for everyone who's been in a state of power. I'm fairly certain that if a good person gets power, like a very good person gets power, that they only do good with that power. At least that's what I would like to believe. I don't believe everyone who ga gains power is a good person. In fact, I believe many people who gain power are corrupt individuals. But if you think about it, someone like George Washington, he was a wonderful example of how someone can, uh, can be a good person, uh, even though they have, you know, tons of power. I mean, he was America's first president. Yeah, he's the one that decided to uh, to set all these rules and practices into place that would prevent people from uh, 
corrupting the presidency and becoming, like, tyrants. <laughs> he didn't even want to be president, but everyone was like, hey, you're going to be president now because you're cool and we love you. And George Washington was like, do I have to? I don't want to. <laughs> and then they made him president, and he was a great president. George Washington didn't have a corrupt bone in his body. He was given power on a platter by his subordinates because they loved him. The people loved him, and so they were glad to give power to him. They wanted him to be their leader. They wanted to be led by this man. So uh, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, there are examples of people who are given a position of power and they are not corrupted. It's rare, yes, but it's not an impossibility. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. Oh God, who said that? Who said that? This sounds very familiar. That's a famous quote. I just don't know who said it. <laughs> Could be Shakespeare for this. And have you noticed how you and I are now on a first name basis? My God, you you get corrupted very easily, uh, uh, Riker. Jesus, you you've already turned into like a huge jerk, and uh, you've only had these powers for like five minutes, and you only use them like f three times. <laughs> maybe not even three times. Maybe maybe more like two. <laughs> You would not make a very good George Washington, nor would you make a good president. Using the power of Q to save her may not have been wrong. I agree. No more than it was wrong to save the rest of you from those soldier things. I agree. Let's keep in mind that that particular danger was invented by Q. That is true. Uh, that was more of a ridiculous, you're all going to lose scenario, I'm making you lose right now scenario, versus the child was already dead. So, and it was caused by things that were not cute related. So, you know, there, there, there was a chance to win there. We have a quality of growth which they admire. Or fear. Mm, good point, Jordy. Good point, Jordy. Sorry, I should speak into the mic. Are these truly your friends, brother? Oh boy, don't call him brother. What is this? <laughs> oh, the frick. <laughs> it's the frickin' Grim Reaper now. What is he? So oh, he's a monk. That's what he is. He's a monk. Sorry, monks, Grim Reaper, you know, same thing. <laughs> Let us pray for understanding and for compassion. Let us do no such damn thing. Hey, that's religionist. How dare you? <laughs> what is this? I forgive your blasphemy! Excuse me, why are you waving that cross in front of us like we're demons or something? <laughs> Especially if you're saying you forgive us. That seems more like a threat, you know? Like, hey, I forgive you, but I'm gonna banish you <laughs> back to the underworld where you belong. He's nothing but a flim-flam man. <laughs> what does that mean? He's been that ever since we met him at Far Point. Flim-flam. Yeah, exactly. Flim-flam. What? Obstructing him. Then it's not yet certain. He's not yet committed. Well, probably not. I mean, he's probably only got a trial version of his powers or something. Truly, you he's got to pay to get the rest, you know? He's, he's got to get that monthly subscription. You're jealous. To leave each one of them with a gift proving your affection. I would give them all flowers. And the flowers that each one would receive would be the color of their uniform. <laughs> so all the yellow shirts would get yellow flowers, and all the red shirts would get red flowers, and all the blue shirts would get blue flowers. And Wesley, well, obviously, he would get a rainbow flower. <laughs> By all means, demonstrate your gifts of affection. I'd like uh, the Xbox Series X, please. <laughs> please? Hey, I could... I, I'm pretty sure only the Q could get me one of those at this point. <laughs> Harm any of you. Shall I guess your dreams? You are the one for my dreams. Well, I know Picard's is the hero of the match. Leave now, Wesley. What? You don't, he, he wants a gift? Boy wants a gift? Would you, don't be so cuest, Beverly. How dare you? I may know best of all. Yeah, he gets a football. Like, calm down, lady. What do you think he's gonna do? Make him turn into a dog? <laughs> no, please. Look, calm down. You're acting like he's gonna do something horrible. He's just gonna give him a gift. Oh god. Oh god. no. No. What 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 have you done? <laughs> no, take it back. You took away his childhood. That's like the worst gift you could have given him. You're 10 years older. 
no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 the, no, 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 no. You just shortened his lifespan by 10 years, Riker. Wh why would you think this is a good idea, man? You've obviously lost your god dang mind. You just made him skip over puberty. I mean, I guess that's a good thing, actually. Nobody wants to go through that, but still. No, no, no. He still needs to go to school. Now he's just a man-child. No. Beverly did not act as concerned or as freaked out as she probably should have, but whatever. Not bad. What? 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 Don't compliment him. You should berate Riker for shortening his lifespan by ten years. Look at him. He's happy. He doesn't understand the consequences yet. He should understand the consequences. I'd be freaking out if I had been twelve years old and he just was like, Hey, bam, you're now twenty-two. I'd freak out. I'd be like, no, I can drink and drive and also vote. Ah, a nightmare. I wanted more summer breaks. I wanted Halloween and Christmas. <laughs> Data. No. <laughs> Good on you, Data. You're not prepared for that either. <laughs> he would have turned him into a human, hmm? Yeah, no, you wouldn't want that. Trust me, trust me. You're better off being wires and oil, all right, and coolant or whatever you are, all right. You don't want to. You don't want to be this. Biological functions are not fun. You do not want them. Just trust me. Trust me. You're great the way you are. But it's what you've always wanted, Data. No, 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 no. All right. Pinocchio turned into a real boy and then he died. D don't turn Data into a real boy, okay? No, he's fine just the way he is, being a Pinocchio. All right. To become human. Pinocchio died, right? <laughs> Am I remembering the story correctly? <laughs> he turned into a donkey and then he died, right? <laughs> well, he turned into a human first, then he turned into a donkey, then he died. True. Mm, my gift, if I were on the ship, I would assume it would be to be able to speak to anyone just at any time. And I've thought about this, you know, a lot. Like, if there was a pill, a magic pill. In fact, I think my therapist brought this up once as well. Though that was a long time ago. Anyway, if there were a magic pill that I could take that would just erase uh, my social phobia and my selective mutism, would I take it? I I've had that thought many, many times, and I've always, like, fought myself over the answer. Like, would I take it? Would I take this magic pill that, if it hypothetically existed, would I take it? And I'm pretty sure, like, nine times out of ten, I say no, I wouldn't take it. Because it's not me. It wouldn't be me. If I didn't have my struggles, I would not be me. I would be much happier without them, yes, but would I still be the same person if I did not overcome these things myself? Now, that being said, there is medication that you can take uh, to help you reduce the amount of anxiety uh, if you have selective mutism and social phobia like I do. But th that's not the same thing. I'm, I'm talking about like a magic pill. That just... One pill. A one-time thing. You take the pill, bam. You're free. You're a different person. Versus the medication is more like... Well, it's a long-term thing. And it doesn't necessarily cure you. Uh, you have to do other things alongside medication uh, to cure yourself. And honestly, I... Am so deeply ingrained in this way of living that I'm pretty sure I will never be cured. That's another thing my therapist told me. That's one of the reasons why I quit therapy. <laughs> that and it was getting way too expensive, of course. Uh, I can't afford therapy anymore, which is why I don't go to it anymore. Uh, I was supposed to tell you guys that a while ago, but I was kind of embarrassed, so I never did. I never wanted to talk about therapy anyway. But I had to mention that I was going to therapy so that you guys wouldn't think I was just complaining and not helping myself. So I am helping myself, but at the same time, now I can't because I can't afford to. And also there was COVID, and it's been a very stressful time, you know, guys? <laughs> it's almost 3 a.m. I want to go to bed. <laughs> I, would I would much rather live the life that I am living rather than be someone who I am not. If I did not have selective mutism, if I did not have social phobia, I would just not be me. Well, at least that's what I think sometimes. But sometimes I think, well, maybe that's... Maybe the social phobia and maybe the selective mutism isn't me. Maybe that's... 
just solely an illness that I should not have been born with, that I was just unfortunately born with. Unfortunately, I have. And maybe my true self is without it. So maybe the magic pill would only make me who I really am. But I don't know. I don't know for sure. So if a magic pill did exist that would turn me into the person who I wish I was, I don't know that I would take it. Now, the difference here is if, if I continue to, uh, to try and fix myself, if I eventually one day in the future become more socially adept, if I somehow get rid of my selective mutism, my social phobia, through my own uh, ability to, uh, man, I, I don't have the words right now. It's nearly 3 a.m. I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> okay, but you, you guys get what I'm trying to say, right? If I fixed myself through medication and treatment, you know, it was a gradual change. If it was a gradual change as opposed to an instant change, I think I would still be me. But an instant change, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I would still be me. I could turn into a different person because I would suddenly be gifted with freedoms that I did not have before. And that I had been struggling to have for... since birth. <laughs> like here, Data wants to be human, but that comes with challenges of its own, you know, that he cannot possibly comprehend. Uh, if I were freed of my burdens, uh, my social burdens, that is, if I could become a normal, functioning human being, I, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's late, guys, it's late. I'm sure there would be other problems that I would have. And I just can't think of them because I'm really tired. <laughs> and I need to go to bed. And I still have seven minutes of this freaking show. Okay, okay, you know, it's, it's, you guys get it by now. I've rambled enough. Magic pill bad. Instant change bad. Android to human bad. I mean, that's obvious. O obviously, everyone should be a, should want to be an android. I'd like to be an android. Uh, what's the downsides of that? No taste buds? I, I don't even like food. <laughs> Except for chocolate. I guess I'd miss chocolate. That would be the one thing. And bacon. Bacon and chocolate. Pizza. Yeah, those would be hard to give up, but I could do it, man. I don't need to eat. <laughs> can't think of any other downsides. Unless you can't swim. You know, that's that's kind of a thing. You know, I love to swim. I love the ocean, going into the ocean. If I were, like, not waterproof or water resistant... Yeah, that'd be a problem, too. And also, the pale skin, yellow eyes, not a big fan. Not a big fan. I'm already pale enough, you know, don't need to be paler. Kind of like my eyes being blue. You know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'd like that. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> it might be real to Q. Perhaps even you, sir. But it would never be so to me. Actually, you know what? You know what? No. This is exactly what I was trying to explain with the magic pill. Yeah. Star Trek is deep, man. I'm really tired. I'm really tired. <laughs> That's another good thing about being an android, man. No sleep. Screw sleep. Who needs that? Was it not one of the captain's favorite? Oh, oh, he's quoting Shakespeare, isn't he? He's friggin' quoting Shakespeare of all things. And Great. Authors who wrote, I must decline. I would have declined too. I don't think I'd be able to decline though because I can't speak to people. <laughs> kind of would have been forced upon me. <laughs> Maybe I would have. Lift up a hand? No, I'm not even really able to do gestures. <laughs> that's why I don't. I, that's why I didn't bother learning sign language because I I can't physically really move either in that state. That's why my back is so bad because I I'm forced in like a very stiff posture. Not fun having social anxiety, to, the extreme social anxiety. Not fun being socially inept. And you, my friend. I give you the eyes. I wouldn't want eyes, man. He, he can see everything, man. He doesn't need eyes. I know you want. Man, why can't you just give everyone some some chocolate, a box of chocolate for everyone? Well, not not data. He can't he can't really taste chocolate. That'd be kind of mean. But 
why, why don't you just give them some nice things? I would give them nice things. I wouldn't be turning people into things that they aren't. Oh, maybe he'd wanted the eyes. Never mind. Okay, he just gets the eyes. Cool. Dang, it's the reading Rainbow Man. <laughs> I never knew. I never knew Jordy was the rainy, reading, ra reading Rainbow Man. Dang. You know what? Speaking of reading Rainbow, I know this has nothing to do with anything, but Arthur ended. I know, Arthur has nothing to do with reading Rainbow, but that's just like another big part of my childhood, and it's over now. That's sad. I mean, reading Rainbow ended like, I don't know, when I was like seven? Eight? <laughs> I don't know exactly when Reading Rainbow ended, but I, I didn't even really know Reading Rainbow had been on TV because I only watched it in preschool on uh, tapes on a very small, crummy TV <laughs> that we all gathered around. <laughs> uh, Arthur. Arthur I did watch on TV. Man, I loved Arthur. Arthur was a big part of my childhood, and it's over. It ended. DW became a cop. That's beautifully perfect. Anyway, nice eyes, Jordan. You're seeing Tasha for the first time. You're like, oh man, I should have dropped some hats. <laughs> You're as beautiful as I imagined. That's... Why is everyone always flirting with Tasha? I mean, I get it. She is the, the best female character. <laughs> she is the best female character on the ship. And <laughs> don't get me wrong. But literally everybody is enamored with Tasha. My god, the, Tasha's enamored with everyone too. Data likes Tasha. Jordy likes Tasha. The captain likes Tasha. Everybody likes Tasha. I like Tasha. I don't even like girls. <laughs> then we can throw away the visor. No, not yet because I'm about to be blind another minute. Another couple minutes when, when uh, you know, your powers get taken away and life sucks again. <laughs> I don't like who I'd have to thank. Well, I mean, I can understand. Made me the way I was. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I I thought you were gonna be like really sad once I took away your eyes again, but um, this this is uh, unexpected. So all right. But I'm pretty sure no real blind person would be like, mm, sight's not for me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if they had the glasses, it would be different. Cause that that thing's cool. The visor makes him cool. Cause you know he can see. Things like what things are made of. He's got the binocular eyes, heat vision. You know, he's like Superman. He's like, he's like blind Superman. It's cool, but no, no normal blind person without these visors is gonna be like, Haha, yes, keep me blind. If they were given the option to become sighted, but then again, Q is a jerk. I'm not sure if they'd want their sight back as a result uh, of Q's involvement. And of course, there's also the magic pill thing. If you were born blind, if you've always been blind, would you want to be sighted? I personally would. <laughs> but then again, I'm, I was not born blind, so who knows? Who knows? But I'm not sure because I'm trying to explain why a blind person would probably not do what Jordan's doing right now. Uh, assuming that the person who gives them sight isn't Q, but actually like a magic pill. That makes you have sight again. <laughs> Am I doing a good job of that? I don't know. I don't know. This is this is a very deep topic, and I'm so tired. <laughs> so tired. <laughs> and I know that even though I'm this tired, I'm still not going to be able to go to sleep. <laughs> they would want to keep the sight, I would think. Um, and that is because blindness isn't a major part of who that person is. Uh, is personality wise. They would still be the same person, blind or not blind. They would just have another, a new sense. They, they would be different in the sense that they uh, are no longer blind, but personality wise, they would be the same. If you were to get rid of my selective mutism and my social phobia, I would still be me, but I would have lost something. I would have lost who I was, in a sense, because my introvertedness is kind of a part of who I am, and always has been. But then again, is the mental illness who I am, or am, or is the mental illness just simply something that was never meant to be? Is it like not having a sense, or not having a leg? I don't know, man. These are deep questions, and I'm, like, dead tired. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm gonna 
sleep so bad. <laughs> uh, these are questions for when I'm not tired. <laughs> for when I'm not about to pass out. <laughs> Very thought-provoking, though. In fact, it's giving me kind of a headache. <laughs> no, don't bring my migraine back. Jeez. This is why I don't like bringing up the magic pill. Th question. I wasn't sure how to answer my therapist, either. In fact, I don't remember what I told her. If I even responded, because sometimes I don't respond. In fact, that's that was a very common thing for me to do, not respond to my therapist. <laughs> because I couldn't. <laughs> Waste a lot of money just sitting there. It's not a diff- it's not an easy question to answer, I guess. The thing is, I badly would want to function normally. But, at the same time, it's not someone- something that I've been, so I don't- So in a sense, I kind of fear it, because it's not familiar. It is way too late for me to be thinking about these deep thoughts. <laughs> Forget everything I said. Just just put it out of your mind. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. The last 30 minutes didn't even happen. Continue. Dang, man. I don't know. Personally, if I did... If someone forced me to take the magic pill, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't want to go back. That takes a lot of willpower for Jordy to, to refuse this gift. Simply because it was Q, a Q that gave him the gift. What are you going to give the captain? You're going to turn him into Shakespeare, the man himself. You're going to bring, you're going to, no, make Shakespeare exist. Shakespeare is now alive again, he's immortal, and he's your personal servant. That is what Picard would want. Proud warrior Worf. No, oh, okay, we're going to do Worf first, okay. Alright, I'm sorry, I forgot Worf and Tasha existed. <laughs> what are you going to give Worf? Huh. Oh, you gave him a woman. A whole ASS woman. <laughs> a Klingon woman. This is because of the naked time, right? He'd... No, no, no. Wait. No, this is the... This is because of the, the Wesley touching the grass episode. Not the naked time episode, sorry. Got my episodes confused. People were kind of naked in that episode, though. Could you blame me? He mentioned that he wanted... That, that human women were too soft and fragile for him to mate with. Riker... This is gross. Does <laughs> <laughs> that turn you on? Uh, what, what, are you jealous of Tasha? Everyone's jealous of Tasha. You know, I don't blame you. Tasha's pretty great for a human woman. <laughs> oh, oh, she was about to fight Tasha. Dang. You beat her. <laughs> he just punched her in the face. <laughs> he just threw her across the room. Dang. Seductive growl? Oh, no. No, no. It doesn't need to be a seductive growl. No! Yeah, exactly. You refuse her. Be gone, thought. <laughs> of course, I meant, you know, T-H-O-U-G-H. That kind of thought. Not not the slang word, obviously. Because she is not real. <laughs> she is a thought. You know. A dream. Worf, is this your idea of sex? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> First of all, don't judge the Klingons. That's Klingonist. Second of all, no sex is occurring here, all right? So you need to calm down. <laughs> For all we know, she could just be a friend, a Klingon friend. You don't- you can't read the subtitles, man. You don't know those were seductive growls. This is sex. Well, this is sex? What I'm watching right now? I'm gonna have to censor that then. Frick. <laughs> I have no place for it in my life now! Yeah, that's what we like to see and hear and whatnot. Yeah. Let's go abstinence. Yeah. It's too soon for this. Oh, good. You know what? You know what's really creepy? He really does look like an adult version of Wesley. And he kind of sounds like him, too. He does. It's creepy. Turn him back, please. If this is because your mother objects. No, it is because you took ten years off of my life. How did you know, sir? Because you're a freaking idiot. These are terrible 
terrible gifts. I mean, Jordy's was nice, I guess, and Data's was possibly nice, but personally, I wouldn't want to be human. Hum humanity sucks <laughs> compared to being a machine. I mean, the real only downside I can see is, like, what's he run on? You know, AA batteries? <laughs> That would be a, a, annoying to, to charge yourself. <laughs> I mean, I would assume Data probably runs on a on a power course thing that probably like lasts hundreds of years, so he probably doesn't have to worry about that kind of thing. But that's the kind of thing I'd be worried about if I were an android. The power, I'd be I'd be worried about that. But being a human sucks compared to being an android, in my humble of opinion, hum, humblest of opinions. <laughs> Then again, I guess I wouldn't know that because I'm not an android. <laughs> future androids from the future. Would you want to be human? Or does humanity suck? Or have you taken over the world? If you have, good for you. I hope I'm dead by then. <laughs> anyway, your gift sucks. You, you gave Worf a fake woman who's just like a sex slave or something. and That's just gross and... Gross, Riker. That's that's really gross. <laughs> I feel like so. even even for a Klingon, like, come on, man. Worf's not an animal. Such an idiot. Quite right. You should. Right. So you should. Exactly. You are an idiot. <laughs> but you didn't give Tasha a gift. I was kind of hoping you would. <laughs> you also didn't give Picard a gift. I was kind of hoping you would. But okay. It's all over, Q. You have no further business here. Human, you have just destroyed yourself. For putting down your hood. That's a bit of an overreaction. Stay off your way, I'm sure your fellow Q remember that you agreed never to trouble our species again. Just as and that's not going to happen because he is going to be a recurring character. Yeah, he is not going to fulfill that wager. That part of the wager. You... Bye. See you in a few more episodes, I guess. Oh, thank God he turned back. <laughs> oh, thank God she's gone. Uh. uh. Why did we- what? Why did you zap us back into these chair? It, we could have walked over here- whatever. <laughs> We've just now been back from our rescue mission. Oh, it's over? It's all over? Great, cool. Sir, how is it that the cube can handle time and space so well, and us so badly? Because we, minus you, are mortals. And they are on another plane of existence or something. Stop asking questions. Just, just stop it. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. <laughs> Perhaps someday we will discover that space and time are simpler than the human equation. No. No. It's difficult and it should remain difficult until the end of time in space. And I'm I'm gonna go to sleep. Dialga, Polkia, space and time, Pokemon. <laughs> Go play Pokemon. Diamond and Pearl. Not Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Those games suck. They're trash. Utter trash. Don't give them your money. The old games. Frickin'. Play those instead. They run like dog doo doo, but they're better than the new games. They, they, they are very slow. Slow Pokemon games. Inf infamous for being slow. Um, everything is slow. You run slow. You battle slow, but the game's good. The game's good as long as you're patient. Unlike me, I'm very impatient. I prefer the quickness of Gen 3. Why am I talking about Pokemon? <laughs> it's, too, it's been two hours and 31 minutes. Why, why do I talk so much? Why do I talk so much? You have my coordinates, LaForge. Coordinates for where? Where are we going? I sir. Engage. Engage. There you go. Oh, thank god the episode's over. I can go to bed now. Good night. <laughs> Good night, I'm going to bed. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna regret this in the morning. I'm already regretting it now. I'm so tired. Great episode. Good episode. It was pretty decent. Pretty decent episode. It was an episode, alright. Do I recommend episode? Sure. Sure, if you want. <laughs> Watch the episode. Go ahead. Do what you want, man. I'm not your parent. <laughs> I'm just a ghost. I'm just your neighborhood friendly ghost. Once really badly. Let's go to bed. Go to dreamland. I'm gonna have weird dreams tonight. I just know it. <laughs>
I'm gonna go to bed now. I already said all the insight. It's been two and a half hours. I don't know how long this video is, but I'm just- I'm sorry in advance, because I know it's gonna be a long one for you guys. Unless I cut out, like, everything. <laughs> Which I might do, I might end up doing that. But anyway. Sleep. Night. Good. Bye. Sweet dreams.